Again, as we mentioned, the campus now not on lockdown. Right. They're free to go where, wherever they might. Um, state police say it is safe there, but stop short of saying it's safe for the whole community. Uh, we told you earlier also about the uh, rest stop on Highway 81 that was closed indefinitely. Uh, police did say that rest stop that they're still investigating um, something there, but wouldn't say whether or not it's connected to this investigation. Um, we had heard that potentially um, some suspicious activity there where somebody went inside, right. changed their clothes, and left. Um, police will confirm that they're investigating something there, but won't say whether it's connected. So again, they leave you to wonder, have they found the shooter? Is the shooter right. this person, second person who was found dead? Or potentially, is there someone else out there? But the bottom line, two people are dead today on the Virginia Tech campus from gunshot wounds. and. We also hearken back four years ago because of what happened today. Ten on your sides, Art Khan is here now uh, with a look at that story too. Art. Yeah, Tom, you know, it's almost impossible to follow what's going on there today without thinking back four years ago to that horrible day in April when what turned out to be one of the worst shootings, actually the worst shooting in U.S. history. The drill Witnesses in April of 2007 described scenes of mass confusion and unspeakable horror as a troubled student, later identified as Sung Cho, went from room to room in Norris Hall, shooting students and faculty indiscriminately. By the time it was all over, 33 people were dead, including 20-year-old Nicole White of Smithfield and 20-year-old Lauren McCain of Hampton. The most godly woman you'd ever meet. The shootings that day came in two separate attacks. It all started at around 7.15 that morning when two people were shot and killed at a dormitory. Two and a half hours later, 31 others were shot and killed, including Cho, who took his own life. You can imagine that at the crime scene that the personal effects were strewn about the entire second floor at, at Norris Hall. The massacre left students in shock and fear, both of which turned to sorrow as virtually the entire student body attended a candlelight vigil the night after the shootings to honor the victims and start the healing process. Later, an investigation of how the campus police and other law enforcement responded to the shootings would cause then-Governor Tim Kaine to call for changes in campus security and student emergency notification systems in the event of any future threats that might occur on the Blacksburg campus or at any other university or college in Virginia. I would view the after-action review as encompassing the entire matter, what was known about this individual, the events of the day, and the response thereto. More than two years after the shootings in 07, a Virginia Circuit Court judge approved an $11 million settlement in a lawsuit brought against Virginia by 24 of the 32 victims. Now, in March of this year, the Department of Education fined the university $55,000 for waiting too long to inform students of the initial shootings. Obviously, it's too soon to judge what took place today and how well any changes that were put into effect have worked, but we'll continue to follow this story, and that is definitely something that they will be looking at. Art Khan, 10 on your side.